here's the deal. Most of what we've been doing so far, our quadratic formulas have been in what we call standard form. AX squared plus BX plus C, that's what's allowed us to factor if it's factorable. That's what's allowed us to use the quadratic formula on any of our equations. And that's what has allowed us to complete the square. Uh, but it doesn't really tell us a whole lot about the function in that form. Really the only thing when we're looking at AX squared plus BX plus C, the only thing that we can automatically tell is that the y-intercept is the constant on the end. And if it's factorable, we can tell what the x-intercepts are. But what vertex form tells us is just automatically looking at it, we can tell exactly what the vertex is. It is H, K. Now we change the sign of H. That's why there's an X minus H. You're going to change the sign when you, uh, when you start talking about the vertex. So for example, if that were X minus 2 squared, the vertex would be at positive 2 for its X coordinate. Okay, but the K doesn't change signs. I know that's a little confusing. But that's just the way it is, okay? Um, and hk, h being the x-coordinate, it paired with the x, so it's the x-coordinate of your vertex, and k is there on the end, it's the y-coordinate of your vertex. So the way that we can take a function from standard form to vertex form is through completing the square. So we're going to go through the process of completing the square, but there are a couple of key differences. We're not going to move the constant term to the other side. Okay, we're not going to move the constant term to the other side. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it, but we don't do that yet. And then we're going to subtract that C that usually we add to both sides. We're going to subtract it from the end because this time it's going to be on the same side. Okay, so those instructions really don't make a lot of sense. We're just talking about them. So let's look at an example. Okay, so let's say we want to take this equation. 2x squared plus 12x plus 26, and we want to put that in vertex form. It's in standard form right now, so really about the only thing that I can say is it has a y-intercept of positive 26. 0, 26 is all we can say about this function. But I want to know what the vertex is, um, so let's put it in vertex form. Okay, so... We're going to go through our process of completing the square. So that means that we need to factor out the 2 from the two variable terms. So we're going to take out the 2. So we've got x squared plus 6x. And then I'm not moving the 26 to the other side. I'm just going to stick it on the outside of my parentheses. So I'm not factoring the 2 out of the 26. I'm not trying to factor the entire expression. I'm trying to complete the square with my variables. Okay, so over here to the side, let's figure out how to complete the square. 6 is my b divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So 9 goes inside of my parentheses. And the second difference is I'm going to subtract that from the 26 because I'm doing it to the same side. But remember when we had the DCF in front, we had to multiply those two. Okay, we looked at that a little bit yesterday. Um, I believe when there's the GCF, you multiply that number by the GCF. Okay, and we're going to subtract it because it's on the same side of the equation. We're keeping it balanced, but it's on the same side. So if we add it, we have to subtract it on the same side. Before, if we add it, we've got to add it to both sides. Yes, ma'am. Yes, because we got to multiply this by the GCF. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we are almost in vertex form. All we have to do is simplify everything. Okay, so the 2 stays in front. Factor, we've got x plus 3 squared. And 26 minus 18 is 8. So now I can say my vertex is negative 3, positive 8. And we can confirm that. Okay, we can confirm that. There are a couple of things that I want you to do with this. Uh, first of all, I want you to graph the original. 
Okay, 2x squared plus 12x plus 26. Okay, put that in your y1. Uh, put your vertex form in y2. Make sure you put parentheses everywhere we have it in our expression. Okay, so if we did this correctly, then when we graph this, we should only see one graph, even though we're graphing two things, because they should be the exact same thing. They're just in different forms. Okay, so it's way up there. Okay, and I don't see anything else show up. Now, just to make sure, I'm going to go to my table, and I'm going to make sure that I get all the same y values for the same x values, and we do. Okay, if you look at your table, for every x value, you should see the exact same y value for y1 and y2. We do, so that means that those two functions are equivalent. They look slightly different, they're in different forms. This is standard form, and the other one is vertex form. Okay. And then uh, we can identify. Looking at the graph, we can see the vertex is over here at negative 3, positive 8. That's where our vertex is. And that's a minimum for this one because it's, it opens upward. Okay? The biggest thing you got to remember after you do this is that you change the sign of the x for the vertex. Okay? Well, let's look at another one. Negative 2x squared plus 7. Negative 2x squared plus 7. Now, this one is a little tricky because notice we don't have that x term, so we don't have anything to complete the square with. So technically, this is in standard form and it's technically in uh, vertex form as well because we don't have anything to complete the square with. So it, you know, if you really wanted to, you could write it like this. You could write it as x minus 0 squared, but subtracting 0 doesn't change anything. Okay, so your vertex is at 0, positive 7. Okay, your vertex is at 0, positive 7. So when there's no x term, just plain x, then the x-coordinate of your vertex is 0. And we can confirm this. We can plug it in and graph it and look at it and see that the vertex is on the y-axis. 0, 7 is our vertex. Okay, let's do one more. And this one's a little tricky, okay? We didn't do any completing the square like this, and I'm honestly not all that concerned about you being able to do this, um, but I do want to make sure that you've seen it, okay? So negative one-fourth x squared plus x plus six. So we've got something in front of our x squared, so we're gonna factor out that negative one-fourth now, this is a little weird. How do we take negative one-fourth out of one? Well, remember, factoring out of DCF is division. So do it in your calculator. One divided by our DCF, one-fourth. And I left out the negative. One divided by negative one-fourth is negative four. I know it looks weird, but that's what it is. But think about it. If you multiply back out, negative one-fourth times negative four is positive one. Okay. Move that constant of 6 to the end. Now we're completing the square. Divide b by 2. That gives us negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. That result is always going to be positive. We have to multiply it by our GCF before we subtract it from the end. So 4 times negative 1 fourth. You can do it in your calculator, but it's negative 1. And we are going to subtract negative 1 from the end, from the constant on the end. 
So our vertex form looks like this, negative 1 fourth x minus 2, because we squared 2 to get 4, squared, and 6 minus a negative 1, subtracting the negative is the same as adding a positive, so that's plus 7. So our vertex here would be positive 2, positive 7 because we changed the sign of the x. Right now it's negative 2 inside the parentheses, so it's positive 2 for our vertex. Again, no reason not to check it. Type in the first one, negative 1 fourth x squared plus x plus 6, and negative 1 fourth x minus 2 squared plus 7. Graphics, or really the quicker thing is to just look directly at the table, but at least this way we get an idea of what the parabola looks like. And I don't see another one. I'm going to look at the table. All my y values match up, so we're good. Now, uh, let's talk about our characteristics of these graphs one more time uh, because we graphed a couple of them. The first one was positive 2x squared, so it opened upward. This one was negative one-fourth x squared, so it opens downward. Okay, if it opens upward, it has a minimum. If it opens downward, it has a maximum. Notice that this one is a lot wider. Okay, this is a wider parabola than we're used to, um, but that's because of this coefficient of negative of the one-fourth in the front. That actually makes your parabola wider. Uh, if you had a coefficient of like four, that actually makes it skinnier, okay? Um, so those are just a few things to keep in mind. Pretty much any time they ask you questions about, you know, maybe comparing two graphs, uh, I would really, I would just graph them in my calculator and, and look at the answer choices and see which one makes sense. Um, now, something you can do if they are asking you to compare two graphs uh, when you go to your y equals, and I'm going to change this slightly just so that you can see uh, some differences. Okay, I'm going to change the second one to a coefficient of positive 4 instead. You can actually move your cursor over all the way to the left. I don't know if you've ever been told about these, but um, see how that line is now flashing? If you press enter, it'll become a thicker line. Okay, and that's actually what I'm going to do here in a second so that I know which one is which. Um, but I'm going to show you what the other options are. If you press enter again, you'll see a triangle. That shades, that's for inequalities. If you press enter again, you'll see a lower triangle that shades under the curve. Um, I'm honestly not sure what that does. And that one, I don't know either. But if you keep on pressing enter, it, it just scrolls through these options. You can even do a dashed line. So if you'd rather do a dashed instead of the darker one. And then finally, you get back to the original. Um, so I'm going to do a thinner and a darker line um, so that we can see which one is which. I mean, hopefully you know since we just looked at the other one. But, okay, there was the first one and there's the second one. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So you can see they have the same vertex because I kept them both in the same vertex form. I just changed that to constant in front. So the negative one fourth is downward facing, it's wider. The one with the four is upward facing. We can't see a lot of it. We could adjust our window if we needed to. And it's skinnier. And actually, I am going to do that. I'm going to change my Y's so I can see a little bit more. Uh, let's change to like 30. So you can see more of the top of this graph. Okay. There's the first one with the negative one fourth. Here comes the one with the positive four. Let's see how much skinnier it is than the other one. Okay, so those are just a couple of techniques that I wanted to share with you. Um, and then this as well. On the final exam, if they're asking you a question about vertex form and you can't remember how to complete the square or maybe it just totally didn't make sense to you when I just explained it, all you have to do is graph the function in the question and graph your answer choices and compare. See which one gives you the same parabola. Um, or you can graph it, find your vertex, and then you know remember to change the signs of your x. 
Uh, that's one way it would take you a little bit.